Hello. Today we're going to be taking a look at Micro K8, the tool for developing uh, on Kubernetes using a single node cluster. Very similar to Minikube, so if you haven't watched my video on Minikube, you can go check that out. Basically, this is a tool to get up and running with Kubernetes really quickly. So if you're doing POCs or you have a side project, I highly suggest checking this tool out to get up and running really quickly. Uh, one of the really cool things about Micro k 8 is that it has all these pluggable features. And here I'm just on their official website, micro k 8io And it has some really cool things like service messages. Message. I can't say that word. Uh, it has some local storage. My personal favorites being you can just enable, disable, an ingress controller at will, as well as enabling, disabling kube DNS. So today we're going to go through the process of setting this up, testing it out, and seeing if it's truly as fast as they say. Uh, so we're going to hop over to the docs here, and we're going to be installing Kubernetes using the snap package manager. Here I'll uh, type in my very secure pseudo password. You can actually specify specific distributions of Kubernetes that you want to install, uh, otherwise it's just going to install the latest from upstream. And so now we can check the status of our Kubernetes cluster using micro k 8status Oh, so micro k 8 is not running. Uh, we're just going to give it a second to get started. So we'll actually check the status with the wait ready flag, and hopefully we see it become ready. And so there we go. So now it's running. You can see all these add-ons that were listed on this first page up here. See, they're all disabled. So we're going to go through the process of enabling some of those and then testing out some of the feature sets. So the ones that we're going to enable here are uh, Ingress and DNS. So Micro K8 also comes with the Kubernetes binary installed with it. And we can actually link that or alias that to a system-wide kubectl command. I'm actually going to do that now just for convenience sake. So you actually don't need to install a uh, kubectl or a kubectl. You can uh, just install it from micro k And it actually conveniently sets up your kube config for you as well. Uh, so here I'm aliasing the micro k kubectl with the, just the command kube. And I can just do kube get nodes or kube get pods. And it just works as you'd expect. And so now we're going to come over and enable some add-ons. So we'll do that using the command micro k 8 enable. And using micro k 8 my autocomplete's not working. Oh, is it because I didn't type micro k 8 right? Possibly, possibly. So these are the list of add-ons we can enable. So we'll enable ingress. And you can see it creates all the dependent resources here. Let me try and increase this font size. So it created a deployment, service, a service account, a config mat, daemon set. That's basically all you need to install an ingress controller. If you've installed the ingress controller through the official docs, um, on the, the Kubernetes website, you'll kind of find that it's a somewhat complicated process. So this makes it really easy. It'll save you lots of time. And then we'll do the same thing with DNS. Now we have kubeDNS running. Also kind of one of the required add-ons if you're gonna be running Kubernetes, you definitely need ingress controllers and you definitely need DNS. Um, so the fact that we get these out of the box is very convenient. So now if we do kube get services, you can see our two services running. Uh, and we do like kube get daemon sets. You can see our ingress controllers running as well. So that's really cool. Let's move this over a little bit. All right. And so to test out our ingress controller, <clears throat> we're going to set up a simple echo server uh, the, for the echo header server. So I'm actually looking at Kubernetes ingress. And then under docs examples, there's this HTTP service. And this is actually not uh, an actual ingress resource, but it does have the deployment and the service definition. And that's exactly what we want. So we're going to copy this. 
we want to be cool, we can actually go copy wget. Let's see if I have wget installed. Paste that. Looks like I picked up some weird characters here. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to be cool here. We're going to do it the old fashioned way. Copy that. And then we'll open up a echo header dot yaml and then we'll paste that and so now we have our deployment and our service and we can just do a kube apply dash f on the echo header and that'll create those two resources for us so now we can get deployments and we have our http service and it looks like the pods are just starting okay cool so now we have one of one ready and we should also have our new HTTP service. Cool. So like, how do we use this? What does it do? So it just echoes the headers of your like get requests. So I'm actually going to expose this through an ingress controller. And this is my first time doing it. So bear with me. I'm actually just going to copy uh, a definition of an ingress controller. Oh, looks like I already had it <laughs> in this file. That's funny. And we're just going to name it something, HTTP echo header. Can we have dashes? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And then the class is ingress, or nginx, because that's the type of ingress controller we set up. And we'll set the host to YouTube, because that's the name of my virtual box. And then I actually forgot the name of the service. So let's look at that. Uh, where is it? It's just called HTTP service. Cool. So it's service name, HTTP.svc. And then this is something that you want to make sure that you get right. The name of the port, uh, you can specify a port number or the canonical name that you give it. So if you look up here, the target port is, uh, or sorry, the port on the service is 80. And then the name of the port on that service is HTTP. So we're just going to call this HTTP. Cool. And so now we're going to apply that ingress. Cool. So now if we do kube get ingress, or ing for short, you'll see that we have that one, uh, one ingress resource. So now, um, I'm just going over to a tab, and I know, I know this is confusing. I'm not actually going to YouTube.com. If you looking at my host name, it's, it's YouTube, uh, just for giggles. And so now I'm going to YouTube, not .com, just YouTube. And then I get this response. It's like, oh, potential security risk. That's because my ingress controller is redirecting HTTP to HTTPS. And now this is something that you'll want to set up in production, so that way you're always uh, directing traffic over an encrypted path. But for our testing cases, it's just kind of unnecessary. So we're going to click on more information uh, or learn, what? Let me go. No, go back. I'm trying to ignore the security warning. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh. You cert. Oh, okay. There we go. So this is my Kubernetes fake certificate. Um, this is just something that they give you if you don't specify any TLS certs. How did I go to it? Actually, let's just, I think Firefox is being too smart for me. So instead we're just, we can just actually curl the hosting of our computer. And you can see that we're getting a 200 response now. And if we take off this dash I to actually see the full output, I'm not going to do remote mode just yet. <laughs> You'll see that we get some detailed information from our new ingress resource. So it's actually directing traffic to our service. Our service has a deployment, and the deployment has that single pod running behind it, and the pod is the echo server that we set up. And this is the echo server. So now it's echoing all of our, our headers. You can see the request headers that the curl command set. So pretty cool. So that's it. If you have any questions, uh, please leave a comment in the description. Other than that, I wish you guys the best of luck in your SRE Ops work and have a great day.